Boxing for Def Ball One. Boom, chita, boom, chita, boom, chita, boom. Yo, I don't know about you guys, but it's been a long time since the three of us been on this video. Like, it's been a, I'm uh, sorry, guys. I mean, with Black Friday and with Christmas and Donny Cates and I Star thought, Wars and Rebel Wilson being a cat, no. I haven't had any time. It's yeah, it's been it's been a heck of a time. Hey, Rebel, don't do a signing. It was a nice vacation from for sure. From, well, you know, yes, yes, um, but. As all great things must come to an end, so too did our vacations. We're back. We're back in the same room. You throw back Thursday crew. Can I go home yet? Um, no. Yeah. What, uh, well, you know, we, as always, this is the show where we take some of our favorite throwback stories, older graphic novels, things like that, uh, put them in front of your eyes, and implore you to come read them and buy them. And, and uh, cause they're awesome. We think they're awesome, so that means they're inherently awesome. We can't be wrong. We're right about everything. Because it's more than me. <laughs> Because the more you so buy, more than the, the more that we get to buy because your money pays us. Yeah. See, cycle of life. See, who thought they had something? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Hey, Beyonce loves you in Lion King. Come do a signing. Come do a signing. Come There's sign not scene. a comic. Hey, so? I would buy any comic signed by Beyonce. Uh, any don't. comic. Anyways, so we've right got some got some books to uh, some books to suggest. Come on, what you got? Oh man, you know, in in the morn of David Bowie, Happy Birthday, David Bowie, uh, you're missed. I, I just felt so. I needed something to get me through the day. It is. It's <laughs> the eighth. Today's the ninth. Happy Birthday, David. It's Bowie. a week long morning slash celebration slash remembrance. I mean, I picked. The puncher, just to get me through that. I mean, David, your last album, let's be honest, that's not a goodbye, so see you later. As in, I'll see you later. David Bowie, come to a signing. Um, I, I picked The Punisher by first name Nathan Edmondson. Nathan Edmondson. Does Sorry. that have anything to do with David Bowie? It has a lot to do with David. I can totally see David Bowie being Frank Castle. Totally. You, you would never expect it. Hard pivot. <laughs> Very hard pivot. Well, you guys know me. So, one thing I love about this story, I mean, Garth Ennis, I'm going to tell you, he set the bar this high. But what I love about this Punisher in particular, you show that Frank isn't completely gone. You know, he still has some humanity left. He loves corned beef sandwiches. He loves the Yankees. I didn't know he was a baseball guy in this. I was like, yo, Frank, playing baseball? What? No way. Well, he's from, like, what is it, New York, right? From Queens. Yeah. Queens. He's from Queens. You know, but, like, you see a little bit more human life to punch you know you see him smirk you see him smile not just the deaf cold killer you know stare that you're just so used to him seeing you know when he's mowing down mobsters with a you know an m60 hall point you know explosives which he still does still does at great length <laughs> hey, hey, I, mean, I mean i'm not saying it's not action packed i'm just saying he's doing it with some emotion he did some interesting, yeah, Nathan Edmondson did some interesting character work on Frank Castle. Yeah. I, I, I also read the series yeah. that coming out as part of the Marvel. Don't, don't, don't you talk about Frank, you don't know. I don't just know. agree that it was an excellent run. I'm sorry, I'm not used to you agreeing about anything. Anyway. Ooh, uh, that is true. He's got you there. I mean, you're, you're like cat and dog. Yeah, <laughs> con conflict incarnate. Um, yeah, no, it was a cool, it was a cool run because, yeah, uh, you know, a lot of times what you see um, in, in the superb uh, uh, Garth Ennis posters, yeah, you see... Frank's sort of like he's cold, calculated killer. And he's, focused. He's, like, he's, 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 man, he's focused. on a mission. He's on a mission. Let yeah. me tell you. <laughs> um, the interesting thing, yeah, that like you were saying, uh, Nathan Edmondson does a really awesome job in this. So it's really kind of giving a little more nuance to Frank. Um, some people really like the sort of the cold, just like Terminator mentality of, of Frank Castle. But like me. Like you. 
Um, but this one, but this one actually sees it. Feel, it almost feels like Frank, it, uh, Frank, in the late stages of his career as the Punisher, where maybe he's softened a bit. He's, he's maybe killed. Uh, enough. Far, he's he maybe he's killed just enough killed people enough. that he can he can sort of take a breath. You know, he's still he's still on mission. He's still taking out cartels and villains. Um, but he's but he's allowed himself to sort of interact with people a little more. And go not to the make, diner, give him a stack of diner. He can be games. kind of familiar and pleasant. It doesn't yeah. betray. It doesn't betray the Frank he Castle mythos. A little bit with, a, I mean, with a cop that he, he respects and a, he and left a, a tip at a bar. Hey, free tips. Hey, my waitress is out there. Y'all deserve tips, man, and free tips. So you got to You got to care. He's got to care about people on some level because otherwise, why punch? You know, why? Why bother? Right. Um, yeah, it's a it's a cool run. It only ran for like what? I think it was like a four four volumes. Four volumes, and the whole time again, you just it's still Punisher. He's still doing his thing, but you kind of you could be friends with Frank on a, <laughs> fr- from a distance. As long but, as you're on the up and up. Yeah, you know, if you're mowing your lawn, you see Frank come out and get his paper. Hey, Frank. Does it not, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly <laughs> that. You know, that's what I like about it. Another thing. Clint Eastwood scowl. <laughs> <but it's not. laughs> with a cigar. You yeah. know. Yeah. Like you drink, get off my lawn. <laughs> <laughs> you kids. <laughs> uh, hey, it was, hey, Clint Eastwood. I'm going to sign you. You know you live. You know you live. There's not a comic. <laughs> there is a no. There is a, there. There's a, there's man with no name comics. Yeah. Uh, his, his his spaghetti western. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. They're yeah. they're absolutely. We comics. know you live here, so. Yeah. I, 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 don't know. I don't know. I don't know that. Who? Funny what? Does he? It, he does. No, he does not. He in Texas lives in Los or, or, No, he lives in Los Angeles. He has a house here. He has a house. Well, I mean, so does Robert Plant. But, yeah, Matthew McConaughey lives here. He and Sandra Bullock. Coffee. She lives on Easton Fitz's Chavez. Why would you do that? Why would you release her just address? Just Why, she tweets on it. I mean, <laughs> she, she, she doesn't mind. Anyway, guys, we want a great Punisher story. You know, that just is long but short. Because I you don't have to. Say what? I heard dial up between the pause. <laughs> Come check it out. I had a good time. I'm always a Punisher. Pun- Punisher is at least my top three characters in Marvel. Come check it out. Gwan is the Punish fan. Also, Nathan Emerson at the same time is writing a really good uh, Black Widow series. That he is! Yeah, oh my they did. God. And they crossed, uh, towards the end of both of these runs, they in, ended up crossing over. Oh my God! Um, uh, Phil Noto did some of the art on that Black Widow. Uh, if I'm on one that's still, when I'm reading Black Widow, I'm doing it in a Russian accent. I just love. I still, yeah, I still. I still the Fosha Romanoff. It, it's just, how Black do you Widow. not say it? You know? Yeah. Ugh. Jeez, Russians must love our interpretation of their accents just as much as Texans appreciate everybody else's interpretations of Texans' accents. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Oh, accents. <laughs> so, yeah. Go check out the Punisher. What do you got? So, I'm pulling a Brennan. Get out of the way. And I got a collection. Who I highly doubt like you read all of that. That's rude. That's, uh, yeah, it's called you, called you right on out. <laughs> God, no. A massive stack of things. It's a lot to believe. She must really care about y'all. I also just really care about the justice in general. Hey, I know for a fact that Alfred Payne wore a two-piece Superman. Let's go. Anyway. Best moment. As you all. For justice. What do you got? Injustice. There we go. Um. If you are not familiar with the video game Injustice, you live under a rock. Like Patrick Star? No. What? I'm just kidding. Yeah, it's okay if you don't know about Injustice. You're just less of my friend if oh, you don't. Um, but Injustice was the video game series that involved the DC heroes being basically split on sides of between Superman versus Batman. Um, I don't want to ruin too much of it, but basically a catastrophic event caused by the Joker, because... He decides that he's bored with playing games with Batman, he never wins a game, so he decides to go at Superman and succeeds. And this shatters Superman in the way of instead of cherishing life like he and um, Batman agree on, he is just totally okay with killing bad guys and doing whatever is absolutely necessary. There is no like second chance. He kind of yeah, he kind of he kind of adopts that 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 kind of fascist mentality where it's yes. like I'm going to protect you from yourselves whether you like it or not. And Batman is still on the side of no, of course <laughs> everybody has to make their own decisions. He's like, this is a problem. I don't. This I don't. is very problematic, <laughs> and so it splits the Justice League on who's going to side with Batman, who's going to side with Superman, and. 
it was a really big hit video game. And this was this this uh, the, this card. The video game does an interesting thing where it, it, it shows you the beginning of this where yeah. Superman kind of falls and then it drops your present day characters into that future and they have to solve that problem. Um, whereas the comic kind of shows you the progression. You can yes. see how the world falls into Superman control. You exactly. almost you almost see the Justice Lord kinda of get born because you see Superman where, you know, at any moment time, you know, he, I mean, think about it, Superman lives in a paper thin world, like and if he twinches he could, you know, level a whole city if he wanted to. Basically. Just seeing him hold back, but like he's not afraid of Who's talking anymore. about this book? You, you pick something that's got a lot of fans. People love it, including us. We love Injustice. Down, down, like, circle, X, X, triangle, L2. Triangle, ultimate combo. Yeah, there you go. Anyways. <laughs> but yeah, I got super into the video game and wanted to read more and just wasn't really satisfied with the format of the video game telling the story, which I mean, okay, credit to video game, like video game companies, they sometimes don't always produce the best storyline to back up, like, the cause and effect of, like, Superman and Batman fighting each other. And that's where comic book creators come in to save the day, as they always do. Yeah, and this is a... Save the day! This is a better storytelling, in my opinion. If you still like the way the video game tells it, that's totally chill and fine. But I like going step by step of basically Superman's descent into madness. And so this is going to be a collection of basically volumes one and three? It's told in a series of, of arcs that are kind of like years, the way the, yeah. the society kind of uh, falls into Superman control. Um, so this is sort of a complete collection so of that be, first year. Yeah, this is year one, um, and then this is still year one, uh, not year one, um, oh my god, what did all, what all did it collect, right? It's like the first, it's like the first half. Yeah, it's I like think it is. It's the first half of the entire, the thing with Injustice, the comics, a lot of times when you see adaptations of movies or video games in a comic form, it's fine, or it's sometimes not very good, or sometimes it's just fine. You get an, a trade, maybe two. Mm -hmm. Tom Taylor, in his brilliance, uh, came dedicated in, themselves. He they he came and wrote such an awesome story that this this series actually ran well past the game's release date, well yeah. up, all the way up until they released a second game, and then yeah. they did adaptations of that second game. Um, Tom Taylor, who is gradually proving himself to be the guy who can take silly ideas and make them awesome. Uh, recently he did Deceased, um, which was like DC's, like if, if Injustice is, is DC's Civil War, um, that sounds like a bad idea, but he made it awesome. Same thing with DC's, it's DC's Marvel Zombies essentially. Sounds like a bad idea. He made that story awesome. Tom Taylor, come to a signing. We love you, man. <laughs> but yeah, the Omnibus is going to be a wider collection, I believe, about like, God. Like, they not, they really not put it on here? They listed it in the Oh, list. here you go. Uh, this, so the awesome... Thank you. Uh, the omnibus includes Injustice, God the Us, year one, one two, two, and three. three. There we go. That is what I was looking for with the years. Yeah. So yeah, so this is going to be a collection. So you can either start out with this, which is going to be a compendium of year one, or you can just get this giant omnibus. Oh, God, I am not trying to pull an omnibus right in. And get Omni this... Years one, two, and three for a really pretty decent cover price for only da, 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 that is one twenty five. It's a pretty hefty book too. You get a lot of good story. Out you of get that. a lot of it. It's it's a lot of the storyline, but 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 we're not quite finished there. So then they also came out with Injustice Ground Zero, which you kind of get the story background from Harley Quinn's eyes, which you know I loved. Yeah, because remember, the whole catalyst is something that the Joker does. The Joker causes yes. this entire change to the whole world, and now Harley, who always kind of followed him, you know, what is she left to do in the wake of that? Well, well, now that he's gone, now that he's dead, she's kind of just like, well, damn, what do I do now? So she decides to side with Batman. Spoiler alert, sorry. But he, she decides to side with Batman and actually becomes a pretty good sidekick to Batman. Um, well, she's already fought against him for the past 20 years. Um, Harley is always, in my opinion is a great anti-hero and would be a continuing like anti-hero had she always, had she always just kind of gone off on her own thing and never really fallen under Joker's like wing when she's not with Joker she is in my opinion the best oh, she's because she's not just a lackey she's her own free thinker she gets into her own shenanigans she is a she's like a Deadpool honestly and i really love that about her
Um, so yeah, so Ground Zero tells it from the point of view of Harley Quinn, and then we jump into, actually, wait, my bad, they came out with another one where it was Injustice versus Masters of the Universe. Like, what is this craziness? <laughs> like, hmm. More insanity! An alternate universe DC story versus an alternate universe property. Where there's already enough multiverses as it is, it's just a little... Chris Cross! Chris, Chris Cross! Cross. But yeah, so they did a crossover with that, and then of course they came out with a graphic novel for Injustice 2, which is everybody's like favorite like fighting game at the moment. I mean, I know Mortal Kombat is supposedly coming out with another. Yeah, like the crap. Injustice games are from Nether Realm Studios, yeah. uh, which, which make the uh, Mortal Kombat game. So it's very similar to that, just with your favorite DC characters. Yeah. So um, Injustice 2 obviously jumps into the storyline of explaining like, okay, kind of like what the story is in the Injustice 2 uh, game itself. So it does the exact same thing that this does, only Injustice 2. It's a, yeah. And so if you're not done having enough to read with this, you can jump into this. Actually, there was a more, couple more years, so there is another... There's a lot. There's quite a few years. I think there was at least like 30 more. It's one good, long, sort of really epic story. It is a completely F storyline. If you're not satisfied with the storyline in the video game, trust me, you're gonna find it here. Um, and you may find a little wacky pair of tail with Masters of the Universe. Hey, Top Tower Superman, Superman versus Freedom Fighter Batman. It's pretty awkward, right? It's great. pretty solid. It was a good idea. Yeah. And the gameplay of it is just fantastic. One, one thing I did like about Injustice 2 that I like better than the rest, everyone got their super cool own armor. I thought that was like so G. Yeah. I'm seeing Robin. Oh my god. I'm seeing the builds on that are amazing. I'm seeing Robin with her armor. I'm like, yo, yo, Robin, shaved head Robin just raised right there. Can we yeah. talk about Harley Quinn's confetti gun? Oh my <laughs> sure, god. I love that thing. Gun. Just how she's just like, ha! Of course it's a confetti gun. It's not the real form of it. Well, no. Just, just, you get paper cuts from that. She's, yeah, she's, it's, it's, it's a, a paper cut shotgun. That's uh, that's that's some gnarly stuff. I mean, only Harleen can pull that off. Yeah. I've maxed out my Harleen to thirty. Well, yeah. well, well, speaking of epic crossovers and clashes between heroes, uh, this is actually a long-running tradition in comics, um, uh, and it got no, it's never been any bigger than it was in the nineties. The nineties, for all of its ups and its downs uh, was home to some really big crazy ideas um, and this is where you saw the big two companies Marvel and DC actually uh, become really good frenemies and uh, pit their characters uh, in, in these co-publications against each other so you got to see some Marvel characters crossing over DC characters um, while it happened a few times in like uh, the, uh, the 80s the big the big culmination came in the 90s with DC versus Marvel Comics. Now, Whoa. as you can tell, this is a series of first issues. First and last time they'll probably ever work together. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's like when can you expect to see this happen again? Because um, they're, now they're just they're both juggernauts. Uh, but back in the day, they were like, yeah, let's uh, let's play with these with these crazy ideas. And this is a, you know, the, the premise is simple, really. Um, we basically have these two entities that control different universes. They become aware of each other's existence. One's a Marvel-esque deity, and the other's a DC-esque deity, and they decide, well, let's create a contest. Let's Woo! let's pick our favorite champions, let's get our favorite toys, and just mash them together and see what's the strongest toy we have. Um, so you get uh, a lot of really wonderful fights. Um, the premise is simple. Uh, two, one character versus another character, uh, wh whichever team has the most victories, uh, gets their universe gets to survive while the other using universe losing universe using Lunar using universe. Whoa, this sounds like the most sounds like the most epic game of kickball ever. It, it does, <laughs> except it's called <laughs> Kick Face, and it's with superheroes. <laughs> um, yeah, it was a four issue miniseries, um, and as I'm showing you right now, uh, the, the various they've only printed as a trade back a couple of times, but recently we've had our wonderful coworker uh, Jay. We uh, love you, Jay. We love you, Jay. Um, going through uh, the Bankston warehouse full of that's just full of like millions of back issues. We have tons millions. of back issues, stuff that you haven't seen here in our back stock in, in forever. We're going through that, getting sorted, and um, because of that, we're getting to see a whole lot of really cool stuff show up on our shelves, including this complete run of the Marvel vs. DC 90s uh, comic. Uh, we have all four of those, but if you're if that's not quite complete enough for you, you can also get the uh, Free preview. It's not quite free. It's five dollars because it's a collector's item now. Um, <laughs> but it's a, a preview comic that actually came 
with the voting ballot. I forgot to mention Woo! that the outcomes of these fights were determined by reader votes. They submitted votes before it came out, and the story whoa, whoa, came whoa, out. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Cat versus Batman? What? Yeah. Cat? Could you imagine? Yeah. Whoa. Some of, the, some, of the, some of the fights you get to see. Christian this, Bell and Chris Evans? Yo. You get, you get Lobo versus Wolverine. You get ba Captain America versus Batman. You get Superboy versus Spider-Man. Wonder Woman versus Storm. Uh, Superman versus the Hulk. That's a heck of a fight right there. Um, yeah, each of these issues, uh, issues one and two, are twenty dollars a piece. Uh, issues three and four are fifteen dollars a piece. Uh, it's five dollars for the preview, as well as the uh, five dollars for the Marvel Vision fan magazine issue that also previewed a bigger chunk of the story. Uh, it's awesome, uh, but that's not it. That's not even it. Uh, there were so many times <coughs> before and after where Marvel and DC uh, decided to cross over a lot of their characters in, in single issues, mini series. Um, you know, I'm done talking about this. Okay. I'm just gonna. Okay. I'm gonna, oh, gonna, oh, gonna oh. We just shifted the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is happening. Is... This is happening right now. Oh, I'm just gonna. Oh, 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 I'm just gonna show y'all. I'm just gonna show y'all a little bit. I'm just gonna. Yeah. Come Yo, welcome to my crib, y'all. Welcome. Welcome, come, welcome, come, come, step in. So this is this is Jay's uh, wall. This is the wall where he has been assembling some of these awesome uh, crossover events. Let's 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 not let's not. Like you get get some really wonderful things. You got the, some of the JLA Avengers crossover issues that happened in the early 2000s. You get the early Uncanny X Men meets the New Teen Titans. How many of you want to see Batman hang out with Marvel characters like Captain America, Daredevil, Spider Man, and even the Punisher? Uh, you get unlimited access or Marvel DC access as well. That was sort of the follow up to the Marvel versus uh, DC comic. The original Superman vs. Spider-Man Treasury Edition, um, that one is a heck of a collector's item. You also get these fun amalgam comics. Check these out. Characters where they took DC and Marvel characters and just mashed them together. You got Lobo the Duck, Dark Claw, that's Batman and Wolverine right here, Magneto and the Magnetic Men. My personal favorite, Speed Demon, if you know me, I love Ghost Rider, and this is a, that's Ghost Rider, and The Flash, Super Soldier, that's uh, Captain America and Superman mashed together, JLX and X Patrol. Uh, this stuff is crazy. This is, this is, it's a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, this is our, uh, currently our new display. Come and get these while they last. Uh, yeah, I cannot recommend that enough. I'm just gonna travel. Oh, we're, we're traveling. I changed, yeah, broke the fourth wall. But, uh, but yeah, that also leads me to uh, another thing. Uh, part of our back issue initiative here and getting these back issues uh, priced, sorted, and brought on the shelf so that you can come and, come and grab those. Is we also have a, a Facebook group. Uh, the Austin Books Back Issue Group. Uh, it's where you can go onto Facebook, submit a request for us to see if we have any extra, any particular back issues you're looking for. If they're not here in the store, we'll check against our massive selection uh, at the warehouse. Likely we will have it, and uh, if we do, we can either ship it to you or have it brought here to the store for you to come pick up. Uh, if you're in store and have one you're looking for as well, we actually have a, uh, a comment box shaped like Thor's hammer where you can fill out a form look, uh, uh, looking for the issue. Yeah, yeah. Yum, yum, yum. Yum, yum. Is that worthy to buy it? Are you back issue worthy to find the back issue? The answer is yes, you're all worthy. Um, yeah, so submit your comment uh, in the Austin Books Back Issue group uh, Facebook page or uh, in the comment box that we have here. We'll find that issue if we have it and we'll make sure you get, uh, you get it. Woo! Yeah, come check it out. It's awesome. And of course, Marvel DC crossovers. These are cool because, like, uh, like Jesse kind of pointed out, you're not likely to see this happen again yeah. because the, because of the massive egos that both of these companies are they now. They hate each other. Let's just not even they're, sugarcoat it. They're not quite the frenemies they used to be, but uh, I'm calling it 2099. We'll see it again, dog. Well, we'll <laughs> maybe maybe so. But yeah, come check this out. Come check out our back issues. Uh, what else we got going on? Anything? Uh, so we are planning a ladies' night. This is normally where Brennan would have inserted the cheers if this had been a yeah, video. Yeah, if they finally this, you get uh, I would probably do the adult cheers for this one rather than the kids cheers. Maybe the kids, I don't know. But yeah, we're planning a ladies' night. It's going to be next month. Um, we're going to be hashing out the details and hopefully getting back to you probably just later this week, letting you know when that's going to happen. So yeah, ladies, I definitely recommend, we recommend all ladies of shapes and sizes and ages come by and hang out with me and talk comics. This lady, oh. Also, I heard they're really fun. We're I hear it's gonna be banana. banana. There's gonna be junk food, guys. There's gonna be junk food, junk food and comics and manga 
and I'll put on a movie in the background and we'll play board games that are brought over from Outlaw Moon. It's gonna be a good old time. So yeah, definitely come by for that when I get the details better hashed out. Yeah, we'll have more details coming out later for that. Uh, but yeah, keep an eye out. Um, the ladies' nights are always fun, uh, uh, so I hear uh, I've not been. He's not allowed. Uh, I'm not allowed. I'm not allowed to enter the building. They literally have had to kick me out, kicking and screaming. Um, no boys allowed. No boys allowed. Apparently. Respect, dog. No, it's it's fun. Uh, and yeah, we'll we'll, uh, we'll, have, we'll have more details for that coming out soon. And this week, injustice. Uh, this uh, compendium will be what gets the 15% off. So you don't just have to get the thin little volume one. No, the whole compendium of uh, God, uh, Gods Among Us Year One is going to be 15% off. And it sits usually at $24.99, so 15% off of that. It's going to be sitting real pretty for this next week. So definitely come by and pick that up if you're just as much of a fan of Injustice as I am. Plus, just check out this really cool art. Do it, or you, get pieced, or you get pieced up by Pennywise. Do it. What? Alfred. Oh my god. Penny, Penny works. I know what I said. <laughs> that, brings <Ooh>. throwback. <laughs> that brings Throwback Thursday to a close. Oh, uh, I'm alone. <laughs> Toss a coin to your comic shop. Old Valley of Entertainment. 